Hello. Okay. Hello. Welcome to our Seekers class. And I hope you uh, learn a lot from this. I know I did when I was preparing it. We're going to be talking about spiritual warfare. This is part one. And then Patricia will pick up in two weeks um, the second part of it. And we'll see how far we go on it. But we're going to talk about... <clears throat> Pagans, witches, horoscopes, mindfulness, and mantras. And what the Bible says about those things. About dabbling in the occult. And then finally, how to witness to those who are immersed in these practices. Okay? So let's start with, more. the most important thing is prayer. Um... I wonder, Patricia, would you want to open us up in prayer? Because it's, with spiritual warfare, prayer has to be serious. So. Okay. 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 Father God, we just thank you for the day that you have set before us, Father God. And Lord, just, we thank you for waking us up and just for each breath that we take, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we just ask that you just open our eyes more clearly, Lord. Jesus. And that you just guide us more in our life, Lord, to be closer to you, Lord. And Lord, we just ask for the Holy Spirit to fill this classroom and to fill the service tonight. Jesus. And we just give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in your precious and holy and mighty name. Amen. 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 Lord. And Lord, please protect us from just the evil that's all around us. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit does best. Amen. We just have to trust him. Okay, so our key scripture... Probably throughout the series, I would imagine, it's going to be Ephesians 6, 12. When we think we have it bad and we have wars in our, um, in our families, in our workplaces, in church, you know, there's battles going on with personalities, whatever, but that's not the real battle. The Bible says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Did you know there's evil in the heavenly places? Yeah. Okay. So we want to define the word occult. The dictionary would say it's the supernatural, mystical, magical beliefs, practices, or phenomena. God is supernatural, and there's a lot of supernatural Amen. things that can happen. Yes. My, uh, what, when I was little, somebody bought me one of those Ouija boards, and I was, oh, I was scared to have I had one. We'll, we'll be talking about that in a few minutes. I didn't include it, but that's part it's of it. I'm sorry. What's that? It's wizards, witchcraft. It's all related. It is all related. My son did all that. Yeah. yeah. Then there's also um, the word pagan. A, a pagan is a person who worships many gods, not the god. Amen. And they worship nature and the earth primarily. So they go overboard. Um, well, this is what Romans one twenty five says. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator, Amen. who is forever praised. Amen. Amen. That's what it says. So, I'm going to talk about witchcraft right now. It's a form of paganism. And it's on the rise. Witches can be women or men. Mm -hmm. It's an ancient practice. But there's a religion called Wicca mm -hmm. that actually showed up in 1962. Does anybody know what else happened in the United States of extreme importance in 1962? Anybody have any guesses? Mm -mm. Jimmy Jones. The school prayer was removed from Ooh. public schools. So think about that. The same year, prayer was removed from the schools without regard 
to our Supreme God, the Supreme Court said no more prayers because it interferes, it bothers some people who may not be Christian, a few. Um, okay, so Satan moves in fast when there's a spiritual void. So think about that. No more prayer schools to cover the, the children who are going to, you, you hope and pray they will grow up in the Lord. That got snatched from them. So Satan moves in, swoops in, and now there's this new witchcraft religion, Wicca, many other things happening. That's just one thing. What's Wicca? It's a form of witchcraft, but it's newly named as in, in 1962. Again, it's ancient, but it's that part of it's new. In 2017, there were about 3 million Wiccans in the U.S. And they, it's probably because of feminist politics in the 60s and 70s. So again, school prayers out. Women's lib was in. And if you're... Uh, older you'd remember this that younger folks might not but it was this sexual revolution where we wanted what well, not we but women wanted to have control of their lives and their bodies and they basically just wanted to have free sex without any uh, consequences but then when they'd get pregnant we demand abortion to get rid of this consequence of not having a husband and wife like God created. So Satan is working on all these different, on women, on children, on uh, schools, and on men to destroy the family as he created the family to be. <clears throat> so they thought they were getting, you know, women's li liberation. No. So there was this book called Our Bodies Ourselves, published in 1970. It basically became a Bible to feminists. They weren't reading the Holy Bible for direction, but they really loved that book that just basically, we're in control of our bodies. Our bodies belong to the Lord. Our bodies are temples for the Lord. Here's a key quote from Our Bodies Ourselves. Unless we can freely decide whether to continue a pregnancy, it is impossible for us to control our lives, to enjoy our sexuality, and to participate fully in society. Another word for that is selfish lust, right? <laughs> it causes lack of control, it causes all sorts of things, it splits up families, it mm -hmm. um, kills children. It caused a lot of confusion, so that when women were demanding that, men didn't quite know how to handle it, so they just joined in because they thought they were free to do these things too. But here's what's... Um, God says about lust in 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. So we want to be in control of our own lives. But are we really ever in control? Like, a phone call could happen right now. It changes everything. Right? Are we in control of any of that? But we tend to, if we don't belong to Christ and we follow our lust and our sinful nature, we end up like Eve did. She reached for the fruit on the forbidden tree and gave some to Adam. From the beginning, that's how we act if we don't follow the Lord. So what we're getting at here is explaining why witchcraft is rising, why there's more and more, because there's way more than three million now. 
We have to remember, Satan is the father of what? Lies. Lies. Right. And he has relentless spiritual warfare going on to try to steal God's glory as he just tries to destroy every one of us and our, everyone we love. Does um, anybody know what John 10.10 10 says? I don't know if it's... I don't the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. To destroy. That's his whole purpose. Yeah. So let's remember there's two choices when it comes to our spirituality. We're either choosing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior or we're choosing to be Antichrist. That's it. Antichrist is, you think it's just like the end times, the Antichrist is coming. No, there's, the word says there's Antichrist even now. But if we're not for Jesus, we're against him. Yeah. There's no, you can't be in the middle. Good. Those who try to be in the middle, there's a name for them. They're called omniists. And what they're saying is they combine what they like about Christianity, what they like about Judaism, what they even Islam, um, being Buddhism, anything. What was the term of it again? Omniists. What's on the paper too? Oh, yeah, no, that's all right. I'm trying to get the paper. Well, listen, yeah, you can take this home and remember oh, what we okay. said because I'm basically going down. No, no, you're fine. So these omniists conveniently take what they want to believe in and they create their own gospel. Mm -hmm. They don't go for the discipline part or the um, commandment part, but they pick God is love and then this is, this, you know, you know, you get the idea. They create their own truths. That's a big deal these days. Mm -hmm. What's your truth? No, God's truth is it. These, this is the holy standard. God is a jealous God. He says so in his word. He will not share his glory. He is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. And his truth will remain forever. So if any of us are even dabbling in any kind of witchcraft, then we're going to talk about, you know, like, when we were younger, we might have done seances and Ouija boards, and it was kind of cool, but adults do that now. No, it's not, it's not right. Taking away God's glory, and it's yes. Someone gave me a stuffed animal, and they told me to pray for them using the stuffed animal. Is that was God. Yeah. Now, what is that? I don't know. It um, could be, but I don't know. That I want to throw it away. I hey, can't, go ahead. What would you say? Well, that's an odd. It is odd. You had an armful of stuffed animals. Okay. Odd. Um, if I think it's from who I think it is, I don't want to say the person's name. Yes, throw it away. Throw it away. When in doubt, throw it away if it's an yeah. object that even causes any kind of confusion or like questioning. That that's probably yeah. God saying, the spirit's saying. We have direct communication. We don't need yeah. to Hold a bottle of water and pray for no. We don't need an object. We have God. free access to God. A good point though, because there's always things like that that pop up. And if you're you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you don't need it, right? That's good. Um, another thing to be aware of is even we can be dabbling in it, not meaning to innocently. By reading books or watching TV, um, I'll be honest. I just we just watched um, a new what was it called? Lone Star Nine One One. I like Rob Lowe. I thought it would be cool to watch. Wouldn't you know? They had a big scene about witchcraft in there. I just finished this, and I'm like, oh, oh. Oh. and it was all real lengthy, and it's like, and, but you could see why it's attractive. Because we have this access to God to speak to Him, but they're using not teddy bears, but 
oh wow, it just kind of flew into, <laughs> flowed into that. Right. But they have like candles and all these things. But it's like we have a problem sometimes in our faith that we want to see something, but God says, faith is what pleases God right. in Hebrews. I wish God had a bunch of candles. Well, I mean, candles are okay by themselves, but if they're used in worship, that's not, you know what I mean? But, but yeah, good point. But just remember as you're watching these programs, Satan's trying to program us. Yeah. Well, I watched you. It's, yeah. The word attention. I felt really bad. I sent a card to someone. Well, it was a um, postcard. Mm -hmm. It had a mother bear that was um, dressed and stuff. It was like cartoons. Mm -hmm. And a baby bear. And I wrote on the back how I felt about this person and everything. Well, on the front of the card, um, this person pointed out to me it was sideways at the bottom of the card were all these skulls inverted oh. like this. Yeah. Like, yeah. So you couldn't really tell unless you really looked at it. Um. I didn't even see that. And you had an innocent heart, you, yeah. That see that again. See how Satan does that? He just sneaks so in. Bad. He's a liar. Was something else in it. I don't know what it was. It's but true. When it pointed out to me, then I saw it. That's disgusting because you. It takes God's trying to rob you of your innocence and your love. I don't want to send any more cards out. <laughs> well, no, but that's what Satan wants. Yeah. So, but just move forward. I'm going off the subject. What do you think of Halloween? It's about witches and stuff like that. Well, let's see if we have time at the end. Okay. Yeah, because uh, that one's... That one's kind of a... Uh, yeah, that's rough. rough. I don't know. Is it rough, really? I won't. I mean, I see... I we'll see talk about... Let's yeah, see if we have time, time at the end. Because we're, we're like 10 minutes into it. It's a... Good question, though. I'm not trying to discourage it. Okay, so why do we have so many witches and Wiccans going on? I've actually, uh, I, I've heard people, I know people personally, and they don't trust a father God, so maybe something happened in their lives, women. Um, so they'd rather serve a green Mother Earth, because it's... Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some say the Me Too movement is causing that. That's a, you know where women are looking backwards and they've been abused. But think also, I'm not taken away from the fact that some women are abused, were abused. But remember what we just said in the '60s, '70s, and '80s in the Me Generation. All the rules change, so. I'm going to be honest, like Bill Cosby's in prison right now. Yeah. But when you think about the culture, he, it was in the 60s and the 70s, yeah. and these women were drinking and went to his bedroom. What do you, you know, and, and back then, you know, so you have to be careful even what you see on TV and the news. And, That's right. But, you know, he turned out he was a very um, helpful, Her. wonderful man, and now Her. he's in prison. Her. But think about it. like back then in the culture, he was wealthy. Well, he I, was I liked him at the time, and not. Yeah, but the I women. Got in jail. I didn't like. I don't I don't know. Know. The women. <laughs> the women had. I don't know. No, I'm just saying though. I'm not judging. <laughs> I don't know that any of them. But I'm just saying the times were different, yeah. and these people. You know, you're looking backwards at the terrible change in our society, so. Mm -hmm. And what, who's causing all that confusion? Yeah. Yeah. Satan, that's right. So when we're looking at um, people who are into uh, Wicca and self-proclaimed pagans and whatever they are, we can't judge them. You know why? Because we can't see into their hearts. Only God can. He's omniscient. We don't know why they believe what they do. Is it because they don't know, they've never been introduced to Jesus? Or did something happen that they need led to him for freedom? 
We shouldn't argue with them ever about their practices because that will turn them off. Their ears will close, their hearts will close. We can believe they're deceived, but we're commanded to love, no matter what. Think about, like, we're, we're baptized into Christ's love through the Holy Spirit. And we're going to have a baptism here at church soon enough with a class coming up. And people who immerse themselves in the dark arts, they think they're doing right, but the, again, they're deceived. They can't see God. So they, they say, well, I can't see God, so I don't want to believe in him. Yet they'll believe in astrology or horoscopes or different things that say they're science, but they're not. Mm -hmm. They're not science. So we're going to talk, uh, read Saul and the Witch of Endor. Did you know there was a Witch of Endor in the Bible? In 1 Samuel 28. <laughs> It's, does anybody want to help read? I think it's on your paper. I'll yes. read it. Okay. <clears throat> Samuel had died. The whole nation of Israel was filled with sorrow because he was dead. They had buried him in his own town of Ramah. Ramah I guess. Ramah. Sal had thrown out of the land people who get messages from those who have died. He also thrown out people who talk to the spirits of the dead. Seances. Seances. That's what seances are. The Philistines gathered and set up camp at the same time. Saul gathered all the Israelites to set up camp. When Saul saw the Philistines' army, he was afraid. Terror filled his heart. He asked the Lord for advice, but the Lord didn't answer him through dreams or prophets. God was silent. Saul spoke to his attendants. He said, Find me a woman who gets messages from those who have died. Then I can go and ask her some questions. There's a woman like that in Endor, they said. Stop right there a minute. Don't you think it's interesting that Saul, who was a king at the time, says, find me a woman who gets messages from the dead. Yeah. Why women? Does anybody have any uh, take on that? Because Eve, was, Eve was deceived in the garden of Eve was a snake. And women are more susceptible to be they women are more susceptible to be the breed of witchcraft and voodoo. They get caught up in it more so yeah, than yeah, a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More so than a man do, you know? Their minds are like, I mean, men's minds are more stronger. That's why God blessed the woman with boys. But ladies' minds are, they're different from men. I mean, they're more weaker. They're more weaker. In yeah. a lot of things. They're you know? more, I agree, they're, they're more, more sensitive. Right, yeah. right. And sometimes Satan takes advantage right. of our sensitivity, right. Right. and we're right. emotional. Right. And Satan can run over top of that. Right. 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 So that, I'm sure that's why. Okay, you can go ahead now. Sal put on different clothes so people wouldn't know he was at who he was. At night, he and two of his men went to see the woman. I want you to talk to a spirit for me, he said. Bring up the spirit of the dead person I choose. But the woman said to him, By now you must know what Saul has done. He has removed everyone who gets messages from those who have died. He has also removed everyone who talks to the spirits of the dead. He has thrown all of them out of the land. Why are you trying to trap me? Why do you want to have me put to death? Saul made a promise in the name of the Lord. He said to the woman, You can be sure that the Lord lives. Then the woman asked, Whose spirit should I bring up for you? Samuel, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, she let out a loud scream. Stop right there. No. <laughs> I know. Wait one second. Think about this. First of all, Saul dared to make a promise to her in the name of the Lord when the Lord stopped talking to Saul. Think about that. Yeah. Now, here's this professional witch. Some versions say she shrieked. She let out a loud scream when she saw Samuel. Wasn't that what she does for a living? Why did she let out a big scream? Go ahead. <laughs> she said to Sal, why have you tricked me? You are King Sal. He said to her, don't be afraid. Tell me what you see. The woman said, I see a ghostly figure. He's coming out, out of the earth. 
What does he look like? Sal asked. An old man wearing a robe, she says. Then Sal knew it was Samuel. He bowed down. Okay. He laid down flat with his face towards the ground. Samuel said to Sal, why have you troubled me by bringing me up from the dead? I'm having a big problem, Sal said. <laughs> He's having a big problem. <laughs> the Philistines are fighting against me. God has left me. He doesn't answer me anymore. He doesn't speak to me through prophets or dreams, so I have called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, the Lord has left you. He has become your enemy, so why are you... So why are you asking me what you should do? The Lord has spoken through me and has done what he said he would do. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands. He has given it to the one, to it to one of your neighbors. He has given it to David. You didn't obey the Lord, so he's punishing you today. He will hand both Israel and you over to the Philistines. Tomorrow you and your son will be down here with me. The Lord will also hand Israel's army over to the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell flat on the ground. What Samuel had said filled Saul with fear. His strength was gone. The next day, Saul and his sons were dead. King Saul killed himself after receiving several wounds from Philistine archers, you know, with bow and arrows. So he actually killed himself. So... The word is true, right? Mm -hmm. So did yeah. Samuel really rise from the dead? Mm -hmm. So this witch could see him? The word says that he did. I'm going to say yes. And if you think about it, God has raised um, was it Pastor Steve about a couple weeks ago was talking about yeah. There were uh, at least three people that were raised from the dead. Lazarus, um, a little girl, a little boy, I think, and then, um, of course, Jesus. Now, this could just be a story, but I believe it's real. Yes, yes, yes. So, but I just think it's interesting... God forbids, we're going to find out, that uh, any of this practice. But he used, God used what they were doing for his glory to speak truth to him. Amen. That's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. So the focus on this passage is Saul's disobedience rather than on the witches. Yeah. But it does show God can choose to remain silent towards those who dabble in the occult. They're choosing another God over him. So he'll just ignore him and ignore them. But his people in Israel were forbidden to dabble in this. But the witch was an instrument of death in her dark practices. She just wanted to make some money. I'm sure that's her, she thought it was her job. And, um, She's a, a true instrument of death. But what does God want us to be? Instruments of life. life. Mm -hmm. Using his light. So when they're in dark practices, our light should be all the brighter through the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So here's how you look at Someone who's deep in, or even dabbling in, the occult. Know that they're in bondage. Love them. Don't judge them. You don't know their heart, but know they are in bondage. So the Ten Commandments, the very first one says in Exodus, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. No witchcraft, no paganism, no Mother Earth, no whatever. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down, down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, 
For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Amen. Here's where we put on our, our memories here. Remember, you and I were in bondage too. Yeah. Maybe we weren't witches, but we were antichrist. If we didn't follow him, we were against him. Mm -hmm. Before Jesus came into our lives, we were in bondage to sin and death. Because death is the consequence of our sin. Yeah. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we were rebels too. So we see somebody practicing the dark arts or they don't even realize what they're doing sometimes. Amen. Just remember, they need Jesus. Amen. And we can... Amen. Do something about that by, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. Okay. But just think about, I don't know if anybody know of you know, which I know a couple of them actually. And oh my God. They're not, are they, you ever see them full of joy? Mm -hmm. Why is that? Where does joy come from? Jesus. Where does, Jesus. And it's in Galatians as a, a fruit of the Holy Spirit. We can't have joy on our own. So no witch is joyful. Have you ever heard of a Wiccan-sponsored hospital or orphanage? Think about it. Any outreaches to the needy? No, they dwell in darkness. They do sorcery and spells. And you know what? They're some of the most depressed people on earth. Yes. How can you tell they're fighting for witchcraft? Just if they, some of them will just tell you. You might not know. And some of them deceive you. I mean, they'll hide it. Right. And they'll practice it on you and you don't know they're doing it. Right, but, but our God is more powerful. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. He'll yeah. warn you. He'll warn you what they're doing. He'll let you know. That's true. He'll let you know. That's true. I'm just going on some people who have said that okay, yeah. they, they lot, like being that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times people will say that they are. Mm -hmm. um, but in my past, um, back when... Um, I strayed away from God and I was hanging around people. I didn't know um, that a couple um, did witchcraft and they asked me to be in their wedding. Well, I went to, and again, I was, I strayed away from God, but in my mind, in my heart, I knew it was right or wrong. And so they asked me to be in their wedding and I said, yeah, well, we went to do the practice, you know, the rehearsal and all that. And when I seen how they were doing it, I said, I can't be in your wedding. Because their whole entire wedding was all on witchcraft, you know, the stuff, everything was just, I said, I can't be in your wedding. And it's very popular right yeah, now. They it think is. they're doing something productive, but if true. you think about it, well, where we left off, they're very depressed. Mm -hmm. But here's the danger. The deeper they go into the darkness and the deceit, the more secluded and secretive they are. They're unprotected. They're more likely to become demon-possessed. And they're fully engulfed in hopelessness and misery. And suicide is very possible. Um, I just wanted to touch real quick on that, on the demon part. Mm -hmm. um, just from experience myself, if you are not familiar with demons or anything, do not try to cast demons out yourself. Have a pastor or someone with you because those demons can hop right on you. I actually, yeah, I knew someone I that happened to, to it was not, yeah. I had true. a experience, my sister, she passed away two years ago. So we were in this uh, church, it was a call church. And she, I didn't know what was going on in my life. I didn't know why I had all this horrible stuff happening to me, this bad luck. And I cried out to God. I said, God, why is this happening? There's a lot going on in this world. And they all were against me and my son. Now, they were practicing witchcraft and voodoo and they would put spells on us. They made my son <coughs> have mental problems. They had wound up in Woodside when they were 12, 13 years old. Mm. And they were bothering me. I had to leave the job that happened. And I had a horrible time in childbirth. And my lady, <coughs> my lady swell up. 
Can I ask you real quick, when you visit with your rooms, what are you supposed to avoid things so you won't get involved in it? Or? That's where the Holy Spirit would tell you to tell what to do. Okay. So here's a couple other practices, real quick, that we should avoid and why we should. So what's wrong with a tarot, tarot card? Do you guys know what those are? Yeah. They're not, okay, it's man-made pieces of card that's supposedly telling your future. So people who go to card readers or palm readers or whatever, why are they going? Because they're afraid and they're worried, right? You don't go to them unless, if your life is happy, you're not gonna go. You're worried about your future. What does God say? Matthew 6. Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you eat, drink, your body, what you wear. Will it add a single hour to your life? For the, listen to this part, for the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. I never noticed that in there before. As many times as I've read that. I'm doing a study on paganism and right in the middle of that scripture. For the pagans run after these things. What's wrong with horoscopes and astrology? Well, if you consider yourself under the certain sign of Taurus or Leo or whatever, and they seem all innocent, but if they're reading these horoscopes, they're not reading the Bible. Because everything you need to know about your future is in here. First of all, uh, one level, horoscopes are so generically written they can apply to anybody. But that's not to say they're not powerful. Well, that's well, a lot of people are. That's why we're talking about it. So, again, it's, it's worshiping created things, stars, rather than the creator. Billy Graham said this. God did make the stars as well as everything else in the universe, but he intended them to be a witness to him, his power and glory, not as a means to guide us or foretell the future. Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 3, God forbid his people from looking to such things for direction, because you don't have faith in him then. Amen. It even says, it spells out, look these up, because I have them in there for you. Avoid sorcery. Witchcraft, casting spells, these are all in here, in the Bible, in Deuteronomy. Another thing, a big thing is mindfulness. The um, public schools, they took out prayer, but gee, now mindfulness is popular. You know what that definition is of that? It means maintaining a moment-by-moment -moment awareness of our thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations, and surrounding environment through a gentle, nurturing lens. Mindfulness also involves acceptance, meaning that we pay attention to our thoughts and feelings without judging them, without believing there's a right or a wrong. Mm -hmm. That is so anti-Christ and anti-Bible, and that's what most of our kids are getting taught. Mm -hmm. Yoga, nothing wrong with exercise, nothing wrong with meditating, but be careful what you're meditating on. If you leave your mind blank, Satan's going to be quick and fill it, because he, we already read how he does that. And lastly, have a witness to those trapped in darkness. Basically, love, love, love. You pray for, we kind of touched on this, several of you, you ask for discernment from the Holy Spirit to even, is it should I, is it safe to approach them? It's true. You have to ask. But if they're in front of you and God's put them there, how do you handle them? You pray. And you pray boldly. But um, real quick, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. This is Proverbs 18.10. The righteous run into it and it's safe. They are searching for security and safety. Just like we were. So, if you speak about Jesus, they might lash out or not, but they'll, when they hear that name, the name is powerful. It might do 
it might be enough once they open their heart. Never argue, point fingers, lecture them. Don't ever just get into vain argument because souls are not one that way. We have to establish mutual trust, develop relationships if it's safe, because if it's somebody, it's true. I mean, sometimes it's, it, we can't. But the Lord will always give us what to say. So that's pretty much it. Um, then Trisha is going to... Um, this poem perfectly fits. Uh, who wrote this? You, um, Angel. You, you want, want me to read it? You want to read it? I don't have it out. You can okay. It's, it's, and this is how we'll end. This is going to be our prayer here. When Satan sends demons to get in my way, I duck and dodge them every day. He brings them in to knock me down, but I've got angels all around. I've got Jesus at my side. He lifts me up. I'm filled with pride. When Satan comes for his attack, take a seat. God's got my back. Your harshest words I will not stress. Not today, Satan. You tried your best. Keep your demons under wraps. Don't send them here to try no crap. I love it. I've got faith. That's got my back. Your best attempt won't make me crack. So take a seat, demons, and watch me pray and watch God bless me every way. That's a good way to end it. I love it. I love it. More spiritual warfare next time. Thank you for joining us. We will see you in two weeks on um, part two on spiritual warfare. Have a wonderful and blessed night.